illegally frolicking with children as young as two under state-sponsored operations in Houston, the blue city of Cess. Houston, now known as Sodom and Gomorrah of South Texas. Oh, yeah, it's like San Francisco. And we actually have the left of people defending this. Oh, sex offenders, they're, they're people too, like the New York Times says. Let them dress up in clown outfits and touch your children and tell them to do sexual simulations. Oh, turns out we have the video of this man leading the children in simulated sex acts with other literal goblin creatures. So radio listeners, I'll be breaking it down. TV viewers, you're going to have to face what the children face. But the good news is our calls to go to these events and run people's plates are paying off. Oh, and there'll be more breaking news very soon from New York. We've just got some lawyers involved right now and them law enforcement involved. But let's just say this. We have audio. We have video. But I don't want to be like Darth Vader where he's got Luke Skywalker in episode four in the crosshairs. He goes, I have you now. We don't want to do that. We don't want to say I have you till the X-Wing. I don't want to compare these guys to Luke Skywalker where you get the allegory. He goes, <laughs> and then we'll tell you I have you. So, we're very busy. We're busy beavers. And as I told you, we're not going to put up with the national media saying pedophilia doesn't exist and then defend it and try to send in their commandos, because this, this guy is their commando, in his clown outfit into your children, convicted of raping an eight-year-old boy. But, yes, I don't want to give away the whole farm here, but we've been involved in all this. I mean, I, I told you a few months ago on air, I said... We're financing, investigating these people. And the best place to catch a predator is at their feeding grounds. If you want to hunt one of these creatures legally and lawfully, you have to go to their watering holes. In the old days, they had to grab kids out of their backyards or playgrounds. Now the parents bring their children to them. And it's not men, it's not women in clown outfits. Ah, and they talk to the two and three-year-olds about their booties. Let's have the child rapist talk about your son and daughter's booty. And let's have them dress up and come to the gay bar and dance. So it's all breaking now. And again, while I'm on a cheesy Darth Vader riff, stay in attack formation. So when I come back, we're going to get into that. I don't want to say I let you down. Actually, I really feel like we've arrived in that the public thinks for themselves now. And our mission, your mission, uh, to a great extent has been completed. We have other missions, obviously. But we're going to cover that first. Then... I don't want to give away our game plan, but it, it just metaphysically, I feel like I always have to because these pedos can't help themselves, but I still have to warn them because I don't want to entrap them, even though I'm, I'm not bringing the kids to them. Still, I, I want them to know we're watching. If law enforcement's controlled or being blocked, we're not. And we're legally and lawfully going to be investigating all of these drag queen festivals that are in public spaces whether they're in public schools, whether they're in libraries, whether they're in hotels, we're going to be watching you. In fact, I've made a full commitment. We've already done some funding on this in the last year. You're seeing that pay off uh, in Houston uh, with a hardcore child rapist who was leading operations against children as young as two with the knowing accomplices in the government of Houston, which is now a pedo command base. And I have that from... The U.S. Army, federal law enforcement, you name it. Very dangerous city now. Very evil. Doesn't mean all the police are bad, or, but it's, 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 it's in trouble. Like New York, like San Francisco, it is now 
free reign for hardcore child rapists like you see on screen if you're a TV viewer. That is coming up after I get into the false flag news. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not saying this is a false flag in the term the media is going to use because they have limited understanding of the definition of false flag. I have put into modern use and parlance the modern definition of the historical research of in the past and in the present what false flag variants are. So there's a spectrum. But everybody knows that Jussie Smollett was a classical full-spectrum false flag where from pillar to post, the whole thing was staged. But there's different types of false flags. And I don't want to say I'm ashamed of myself, but as I've gotten older, I've been a little bit more timid and don't go with my initial instincts or analysis just to be safe. And I think that's a good thing. I'm not 22 years old on air, you know, I was already a big history buff at that point, but, but, but still was full of piss and vinegar. I'm a little more careful. And, and everybody should be. But since the shooter himself in his manifesto says that he's doing all this to cause a global civil war and race war and doing it to make people fight each other, and he says he's leftist, but he's also this and that, he's saying he's doing it to blame different parties that actually didn't do it. We're not saying he didn't do it. We're saying he has another motive than for why he's doing it, and he tells you this in plain view, which I've learned metaphysical vampires always do. I'm not saying he's a literal vampire. But I've read his manifesto twice now, and I'm kind of ashamed that I didn't say on Friday, hey, this guy says it's a false flag. Now, Rush Limbaugh did. And see, there's a certain satisfaction there now that 15 years ago, Limbaugh wouldn't have said that. But in 2019, Limbaugh did because it's safe now to say what everybody already suspects. And again, it doesn't mean the government was involved. It doesn't mean that the guy didn't do it. He says in the manifesto, I'm trolling you. And he lists all these different ideologies, but then says, I want a big result. I want censorship. I want control. This would obviously help radical Islam expand. He tells you there what he's doing. See, if Jesse Smollett was really committed to evil... He would have killed himself and made it look like white supremacists did. But instead, he went out like Laurel and Hardy, or I guess the Three Stooges, and staged a ridiculously transparent event. And, and the attacks on synagogues, and I mean, almost all these events are staged. It comes out, they're staged. There aren't real people doing poop swastikas. There aren't real people at the Air Force Academy saying no N-words allowed. It, it just isn't going on. Maybe in some weird areas of East Texas. Maybe in some weird areas of Mississippi. And by the way, my dad's family's from East Texas. They're great people. It's a tiny minority there that's actually in the KKK. But they exist. Just like you go to the wrong area, any place, there'll be a Mexican gang, a black gang. The KKK are rural white gangs. And let me tell you, you pull up in a new truck and you got the super hot girl in town on your arm at Dairy Queen on Friday night, four guys will walk over to you. If you're in the wrong place and say, we're in the KKK, you better get out of here. We're going to kick your ass. And I'm like, what you are is jealous. Let's go outside and I'll stomp your head in the ground. That's a true story. Of course, they backed off at that point. They're always the low IQ losers in town. They've usually got a chromosomal problem. It's sad. They're pathetic. They're not this giant expanding power force. I, I tuned into CNN today to monitor it, and there was Brian Stelter. He was going, exploding white supremacist attacks, epidemics worldwide. They're incredibly rare. This event's carried out by a self-described eco 
leftist who loves communist China, has a classic intelligence operative MO who doesn't work but travels the world all over the place. Looks like he has a commando build. The whole thing stinks. But he's telling you that he staged it to cause a race war and is manipulating people just like the leftist Charlie Manson tried in 1969. So I don't know all the answers. But when he says he's staging it to get people fighting, that's a false flag. A false flag is something you do to get people fighting or to blame someone. I'll explain it when we come back and give you the new developments. I know most of you already understand this. And then... As you all know, about two months ago, I have trouble not letting cats out of bags. I said, all you pedos better watch out at your little pedo induction events where people bring their children in to openly, in many cases, be auctioned off at the same hotel to be taken upstairs and buggered by pot-bellied pedos. I said, you better watch out. Because people are going to run your plates. And when it comes back, your child rapist... You're going to go to jail, and now it's starting to happen. We're not playing games. The money's on the street. And soon I'm going to announce, but I'm working with lawyers and others to make sure it's all done right, bounties. So we're going to turn loose the muscle legally and lawful on you because we're not going to let a bunch of big, fat, degenerate men come in there and have their way with children. Everybody else can... All the other men can run around and act tough and you know, drive around their big trucks and cook their briskets and get tattoos and shoot their guns all day. I like doing that stuff too. I'm not saying you're bad, but you really ought to be spending some time protecting children because it's a move in every town and every city to let them into the school and not even tell parents it's going on. You think I'm sitting up here going, man, I'm really great. I'm really good that I'm the only guy that'll actually do this. The only person that built an operation to fight these people. You think I feel good being the only person doing this? I feel like crap. Makes me sick. You are the info war. The globalists are the resistance to nation states and prosperity and the family. We are the resistance to their tyranny. And we are the cure. So, I don't want to say I'm ashamed at being scooped. Because I'm not. If you listen to the totality, the compendium of what I said in four hours during the Friday broadcast on the Ides of March, a date I predicted there'd be a terror attack on record. That's when Roman armies went to war. March is named after Mars. It's seen as a bad omen for tyrants. Julius Caesar was killed then. And of course, this guy... Wanted to send his political message then. Another big date you see terror attacks on, another big event is May 1st, the communist holiday, formerly uh, previous to that. Its fount, its, its headwaters uh, came out of the occult. So I'd look for something on that date as well. But let's just continue to expand here. I came out and I said, I don't know if this is a false flag. But I don't know how he got these illegal guns when he's from Australia. And they have very serious gun control in New Zealand. And I said, if you read his manifesto, he says, I'm not really telling you who I am. I like communism. I don't like Christians. I don't like conservatives. He's been to all these Muslim countries. He doesn't seem to work. He has an intelligence agent cutout. And he says he wants to cause a global civil war. Well, that's the definition of a false flag is when you stage something to blame someone else or to get a desired political outcome. So I'm going to break this down here in a moment. But first, I got two calls by big national media figures this weekend. I mean, about as big as you could get. You could argue which one is bigger. They're right up there, probably. the. You could argue that either one of these people is the biggest media, mainstream media in, in the country. So I got contacted. Well, one person text messaged me, and I called them. The other person called me. So technically, I called one of them. And one of them said, are you really saying this is a false flag? Because there's a news article saying it. And I called them, and I said, no, not yet. But then I went you know, through and explained you know, how, how weird it was and how the guy was you know, probably just wanted attention but was playing different groups off against each other. 
The other person called me and they said, why aren't you saying it's a false flag? You're Mr. False Flag. You know, is it because you're getting sued from Sandy Hook? And I said, no. If I thought it was 100% false flag, I'd say it. I can't prove that. Then I got up this morning. I had noticed it was on Infowars.com for already a day and a half. Rush Limbaugh came out and said, we have to look at this as a possible false flag. Because the guy says he's a leftist. The guy says he's an eco-fascist. The guy says there's too many people. And he says he wants to cause a helter-skelter race war globally, which is what leftist Charlie Manson wanted. Now, again, I was saying all that on Friday. I was saying this could be. He, f he fits the classic eco-terrorist that wants to cause a global race war to reduce population. They're the ones saying there's too many people. But even Limbaugh, it's like a 10-minute piece. It's up on Infowars.com. I'm just going to play a minute or so of it. Is ahead of me saying it's a false flag. Our listeners think it's a staged event. So I want to get into the latest developments on this tragic event that killed 50 people. And then when we come back, I'm going to get into the history of false flags briefly and, and the different variants of them. So that when you hear me say it has false flag attributes, it doesn't mean this guy isn't the shooter. It doesn't mean people didn't die. It means he had a goal other than what the media is telling you. He had a goal to blame someone else that was his political enemy. And who's being blamed? The right wing. The nationalist. Anybody that doesn't want an Islamic invasion. And that's what Limbaugh is saying properly, because when you study history, just let, let me just give you one before we go to break. You don't think Hitler just attacked Poland. He had to make up a reason. He, watched, he launched Operation Himmler. What, in like 19, early 1940? Let's pull up Operation Himmler uh, when uh, Hitler attacked Poland. I forget the exact date, but it's declassified. They admitted at Nuremberg they did this. Even Wikipedia has Operation Himmler. 1939 false flag project planned by Nazi Germany. Oh, but I thought false flags don't exist. CNN said so. So they launched the attack, attacking their own military bases, dressing up prisoners, Polish prisoners that they'd already captured, as 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 Polish military and German military shot them, shot newsreels of it, and then said, Poland has attacked Germany and launched World War II. So World War II came out of a false flag. That's in Encyclopedia Britannica. It's on History Channel. It's on Discovery Channel. It was in the Nuremberg trials. It was adjudicated. Now, there's the blonde beast right there. Heydrich, planning the whole thing with Heinrich Himmler. Your TV viewer. The average person would say, who are those people? See, I know who all four of those Nazis are because I've studied it. That one right there on the corner is Zeb Dietrich. So this is how they operate, ladies and gentlemen. Hitler became a dictator by blowing up the Capitol building, the Reichstag fire. Learn about it. So it doesn't mean everything's a false flag, but there are a lot of them. And you better be aware of them. And the elite are all moving to New Zealand, and they want total gun control. That's their new capital. Underground bunkers, command bases, artillery. They don't want you having guns. So who gets blamed? Conservatives, nationalists. Every time Muslims kill a bunch of people, run over folks, shoot up a church, it gets almost no coverage. We're seeing their graves, the funerals. They're humanizing them, which is good. But they're not humanizing Christians when they get killed. You can see the political manipulation of this. Don't let a good crisis go to waste. Here's Rush Limbaugh. Gonna, gonna get shot in the process, and and you, I, you know, you just can't, you can't immediately discount this. The left is this insane. They are this crazy. And then if that's exactly what the guy's trying to do, then he's hit a home run because right there on Fox News. The shooter is an admitted white nationalist who hates immigrants. <laughs> um, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm, you, you try to absorb all of this, try to keep some kind of an even keel about it. All right, we're, we're going to come back with a full clip on the other side where he clearly says this is going to be a false flag. A leftist that wants to demonize conservatives, so he goes out and does this. Oh, like Jesse Smollett, but to the next level. See, the reason I know about false flags is, 
I was into comic books and Pulp Fiction sort of reading when I was about four. And I was a really good reader by about seven or eight. Manifesto, he doesn't use the term false flag, but this cretin, Brenton Tarrant, says he's doing this to blame groups he's not affiliated with to cause a societal collision. What did Dick Cheney write in the PNAC document, April 2000? Published, Project for the American Century. Rebuilding America's defenses. He said a lot of true stuff. He said the Chinese and others are developing race-specific weapons. We better do it. That means announce we got them as a deterrent. But then he went on and said, we need a Pearl Harbor event so we can take over the Middle East and then clash it with the West to have the battle with the Muslims now instead of when there are three billion of them, which they'll be in just a few years now. Now you can say, oh, our government's so good then for helping fund the groups and letting them attack us so we'd wake up. But then instead they bring even more in. I mean, let's just be honest about this. I've interviewed the former CIA section chiefs and folks on the air that were, know all the top generals that were in the boardrooms when all this went down. Let's stop pretending that 9-11 wasn't an inside job by criminals in our own government, allied with radical Islam. Telling our military, wink, wink, we're letting it happen so we can then rise up and defeat the Islamic threat before they become too powerful, but then it was a double cross to actually get rid of the non-radical Muslims and then open Europe's borders and ours and bring in the really radical Muslims. A triple cross. This is what's discussed in real Pentagon boardrooms. This is what's discussed at Fortune 10 boardrooms, boys and girls. That's why they want me off the air. They can't stand this show. This is highest level what they're doing. And now look how it's popularized. We all know about false flags, where Rush Limbaugh comes out and says, a lot of people look at the angles, and this guy's saying he was a leftist, and say he's doing this to blunt, he spent a lot of time in Pakistan, looks like he may have been uh, connected to uh, Muslims in Serbia. It's the perfect event. If the left got smart, they start staging false flags against themselves. It's the only card they've got left, and then it happens. Right on time. Am I saying it's that type of false flag? I don't know. But he says in his manifesto he's doing it to start a war. Well, it's listed in Encyclopedia Britannica, and it's listed in Jane's Weapons Quarterly, and it's listed by the Army War College, the Naval War College, and West Point, and the CIA fact book that Operation Himmler and Glywitz launched World War II by the German army staging military attacks on itself and blaming Poland. They were real attacks. Some real people got killed, but it was blamed on Poland and it launched World War II. That's a false flag. There it is, Wikipedia. Operation Himmler. Often less known as Operation Conserve or Operation Canned Goods was a 1939 false flag project planned by Nazi Germany to create an appearance of Polish aggression against Germany, which was subsequently used by the Nazis to justify the invasion of Poland. This included staging false attacks on themselves using innocent people or concentration camp prisoners. By the way, this wasn't on Wikipedia until I went and dug it out of the National Archives and put it online. Operation Himmler was arguably the first act of the Second World War. Let me see if I got the Nazis right seeing the photo earlier without seeing the names. You've got Joseph Huber, Arthur Nobel, Heinrich Himmler, I got that one right, Reinhard Heinrich, I got that right, and Heinrich Mueller. I guess Heinrich Mueller looked a lot like Zeb Dietrich. I got that one wrong. I'm not bragging, but can the average person look at a second string group of Nazis, one of them first string and tell you the name? I've done my homework. I can look at World War I leaders. I can look at World War, I can look at the Russian leaders, the Japanese leaders, the Chinese leaders. I've done my studying. And how does the CNN respond to that? They just say, oh, he's crazy. There's no such thing as false flags. And I'm not up here bragging that I'm so smart. I'm saying, you read his manifesto. I've read it twice. He says, I'm trying to start a war. I'm not who I say I am. He even tells you. 
and it's very sophisticated. So you'd be an idiot if you didn't ask. Here's Rush Limbaugh stating the obvious Friday. The shooter's objective here was to divide. I mean, there's and another thing that happens here when these events happen. You have uh, all kinds of speculation that erupts. And there is an ongoing theory. Mr. Snurdly, correct me if I'm wrong about this. There's an ongoing theory that the shooter himself may in fact be a leftist who writes the manifesto and then goes out and performs the deed purposely to smear his political enemies, knowing he's gonna gonna get shot in the process. And and you I you know, you just can't you can't immediately discount this. The left is this insane. They are this crazy. And then if that's exactly what the guy's trying to do, then he's hit a home run because right there on Fox News, the shooter is an admitted white nationalist who hates immigrants. <laughs> um, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm, you, you try to absorb all of this, try to keep some kind of an even keel about it. And then from the manifesto again itself, the shooter says he's not a conservative, not a Christian, and that he identifies as an eco-fascist, which would make him a supporter of the Green New Deal. Uh, he adds that he disagrees with, uh, with Trump on politics. And that's Limbaugh reading from Paul Joseph Watson's article on Infowars.com, I should add. Word for word, fine. Uh, the point is that I'm, 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 I'm glad Limbaugh has the courage to point this out. Because Fox News is saying he's a right-wing white supremacist, but when you read his manifesto, he says, I'm a white supremacist, but I'm an eco-fascist. I love communist China and how they do things. And I'm not against Muslims. And on and on and on. But they project it onto all of us and now say Trump's to blame. He didn't decry the guy enough. And he didn't decry Charlottesville or white supremacism. When he did, it's all lies stacked on top of lies. So, Brenton Tarrant, when we come back, I'll show you where he says he wants a civil war and wants to place off against each other. That's a false flag. When you go do an act to trigger something, when you're trying to get a political lane and when you're, when you're doing it against your enemies, I'll talk about the different types of false flags from my view. No one's ever really quantified all this, at least in any manual that's not uh, secret. But I, as just a lay researcher obsessed with reality and history, uh, have really documented this to a way. I haven't been harping on the tragic shooting uh, in Christchurch, New Zealand at the mosque for lack of news. Oh, we've got human animal clones mainstream. We've got CRISPR edited humans rolling out. All, suddenly it's not just China. There's edited humans. Oh, for a long time. See, it's just all coming out. Like I told you 20 years ago, uh, and then I mean they had, like I said, in the 1950s, virtual reality systems, everything. There's a breakaway civilization. We're going to be talking about that next hour. The Democrats are moving AOC towards the airlock to blow her out the door, which is unfortunate. We'd like her to stay around as long as possible just for the horrific entertainment value itself. Uh, Beto is uh, showing what an empty shirt he is. Empty suit as well. Uh, we've got a big stack of news I want to get to. Or thematically, no one's making this point, but thematically you just see it in the news that the Democrats have weaponized the youth of this country. That's coming up. And, of course, the big enchilada I'm going to cover at the start of the next hour. And that's the Achilles heel of these, quote, drag queen events being held from Germany to England to the United States to Canada, all choreographed exactly the same, run by the same group and promoted by mainstream media. All you gotta do is go. And all you gotta do is pick out the obvious creepoids, including those involved. And all you gotta do is go get their license plate. Or if you got the proper accreditation and law enforcement or private detectives, follow them home, even if they're on foot. People are like, don't tell them you're getting their plate numbers. They'll, they'll, we're not stupid. I want them to know, I want them to stop it. The point is, is that how do pedophiles come after your kids? They dress up like women in disguises. My God, it's 101 pedos dress up like clowns or, or other things, so th their identity's not known. This is out in the open. And now the busts are beginning. And I just, 
I'm not sure who's involved in this, but let's just say this. When you buy products at InfoWarsStore.com, you're not just financing a radio show or a TV show. I'm weaponized, and everybody knows that. I'm not playing games. You go up against these people. Oh, by the way, you don't just think this convicted child rapist in Houston who was running the story time for kids, uh, not just, by the way, at libraries. It's going on in public schools, you name it. It's, the government's trying to cover it up. Uh, the local government is. It's, it's all coming out. You don't just think he stops there. These people, like him, are the operatives. As I've told you, everything in Bram Stoker's books are allegories to how the, how the elites actually operated. And you've got the Renfield that just wants to strangle kids and, 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 and have sex with them and, you know, eat brooches and things. The men are rats. But who's he work for? He works for the dragon. And the dragon's mistresses want blood of babies. And you look at the Transylvanian elite, they became the German elite, the Austrian-Hungarian elite, who became the British elite. And they famously, not just Vlad the Impaler, but his offspring, they would bathe in blood. They would eat, eat children. They would do all this. And the villagers all knew, don't get near Dracula Castle. Where does Nosferatu live? Where does Prince Charles live more than half the year now? He's, he's retired. He retired to Transylvania and Castle Dracula. Now, by the way, if you're a new listener, this is not a joke. Just like I told you, World War II started with a false flag attack. And then you go and they admit it now. They didn't used to. If you wonder why this is all so demonoid, it's because it literally is a, what does the Bible say? The devil's a dragon. And that's what these people are into. And they got all these useful idiots. They get caught up in the peer pressure and bring their children into it. It's nightmarish. And they literally just hold their babies up and just bring them in for this. So that's coming up next hour. You know, I said I'd get into a history of false flags. But anybody can just go research those if you want. They're part of every major war. Everybody does it. You know, our military is not perfect. And I don't think we should engage in dirty tricks. But... Anybody captain level or higher in Army Special Operations, they even have a manual. WikiLeaks was one of the first things they released, and they admitted it's real, on how to stage false flags. As an emergency force multiplier. And the argument is, well, if the North Vietnamese take over this village, they'll just conscript everybody and we'll have to bomb the whole village and kill all of them. So we'll kill one little girl and leave paraphernalia and have a witness say that the Viet Cong did it to get the village on our side. So it's going to save lives, and let's just kill this little girl as quickly as can. We're not going to enjoy it, but we're real men. We're willing to do it. Or you say that the Iraqis you know, beat the brains out of the babies in the incubators to launch the war. And then it kills millions. I mean, this, this, just, this, is, this is the soup in which we swim. But let me just shift gears for a moment. And this ties into the tragic events in New Zealand in, in a big way, but also ties into InfoWars. What did the head lawyer with the CEO of Twitter say was the re final reason I was taken off Twitter? They said that I abused a, and, and, and beat up a child. And they got corrected. They go, well, he showed video of a, of a kid hitting an adult six, seven times. The adult pushes the kid down. It was all over the news. But see, oh, Alex Jones shows that you're not allowed to. And then they can misrepresent it because I'm banned off those platforms and say whatever they want. Well, Australian senator slapped with egg, which can put your eye out, upside the head by teen after criticizing mass immigration. The media called him a little boy. He's 16 years old. They say he punched him. We actually have the angle from behind. He just slapped him and got him off of him. And now the premier, the leftist premier, wants him arrested, and they're saying, good job, attack conservatives. All this senator said was that every time somebody runs over 200-and-something people in France killing 100 of them plus, there's almost no coverage of who they are or what happened. They say it's not Islam, even though they're yelling Allah Akbar. And he says it's terrible what happened to this mosque. 
But we need to talk about all the Christians getting shot and run over and bombed, hundreds of thousands of them in the last few years. Why is the media only hyping this up? And you turn on the news, that's all you hear. Who the parents are, who the kids are. Here's, they're going to have a funeral, vigils, which is fine. But don't sit there and get mad at us when we say when Islam is killing Christians on purpose everywhere, driving Christians out of every area they've been for 2,000 years, and the media won't cover it. In fact, they support it. So then the media demonizes this senator, give me his name in a moment, and they condemn him and say he deserves it. Let's, pl let's play the video. Here it is. A terribly unfortunate thing, a tragedy, uh, but it's going to be eventually accepted uh, or expected that these sort of things happen when uh, when people are getting attacked in their own. Uh... <laughs> So somebody attacks you from behind, hits you in the head, you know, slaps you in the back of the head. I've had that happen to me when I was out in Hawaii. A guy just walks up while well, I'm sitting there on the beach and he just slaps me in the back of the head thinking I'd get in a fight with him. I said, you're not going to get what you want, buddy. Now, they're saying the senator should be charged, the premier of Australia is. Let's show the footage shot behind the 16-year-old who looks like he's about 5'11". Frazier, Senator Frazier. Uh, Frazier Anning's a big guy. Here it is. All he does is slap the punk. And very fast, he's got good instincts. Somebody attacks you from behind. Now, they'll probably announce I beat up the kid, and they'll probably announce that I am in child endangerment for showing you a video on CNN, Fox, and every other channel. Remember, I showed a kid attacking an adult, the adult pushes him down, and the media, Forbes had to retract it. They said it was me. Time with sex offenders. Please get it. Please share it. And, hey, they censor you on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Share it by text message. Share it by email. Share it by word of mouth. It's on Infowars.com. They can't stop you. Don't let them. Now, I did some studying in the last three years. I knew that global elites are into pedophilia. I knew that particularly British intelligence and EU intelligence would, 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 would use pedophilia as an induction or a rite of passage, uh, a, a gang initiation, so they knew people were totally compromised because no one would put up with that. But then I began to see on ABC, NBC, CNN, uh, AP, uh, local news, Oh, the most wonderful thing in the world. Instead of it being the most wonderful time of the year, Christmas or something, or Thanksgiving, the family, or an NFL game, you know, as bad as those are, at least it's more family than this. And it would be big, obese, scary men at drag queen events, uh, at public schools, and at libraries, and in many cases, the parents aren't being told. They're just coming and talking to your kids about their sexuality and telling them, shake their booty, and you can be a boy if you're a girl. You can be a girl if you're a boy. And so I started saying that people needed to, law enforcement needed to, citizens needed to, private citizens can hire PIs if you've got the money. I know we've done a few things. And all you got to do is uh, go to these events and then go out to the car of these people and about a third of the time, they're, they're sex offenders. Or about half the time, they're an armed robber or they're a convicted murderer. But bottom line, imagine if men dressed like Power Ranger villains is the best way to describe them. My sister's 15 years younger than me and I'm 45. She's like, I guess, 30 now, but... When I was, you know, when she was a kid, they, she watched Power Rangers. And, and, the, and the Power Ranger monster would have crazy hair and big scary teeth and, you know, weird makeup. And would go, ah, Power Ranger, I will get you. Ah! Like hit the clown. So they sell it as, oh, it's not even transvestites. It's not even transsexuals. It's not even 
No, no, it's just drag time. And whether it's Germany or whether it's England or whether it's Canada or the U.S., it's the same program. I've gone and watched with horror. So it's a major initiative against our children. You've seen it all over the news. I've watched in abject horror while this goes on. I've watched the entire programs they put out an hour long. And it's always the same. They go, it's okay to be what you want. You could be a boy if you're a girl. You could be a girl if you're a boy. Touch your booty. Shake your booty. I'm going to play you some of these sickening videos. And then they go, we're grooming you. You're all going to be drag queens. In fact, see if you can cue that back up. I've never seen that clip. My God, of the convicted murderer. We already had the clip of him that hangs out with these little kids. Oh, there's a convicted murderer who's on national TV who launched the whole movement to recruit children into this he says on video in a new video that bring your impressionable children for what we're about to teach them because it's graphic and it's not proper for children so that's coming up next segment and they go to city council members and they go we are grooming your children so i always give you the background before i get into the new breaking news should have started the segment with convicted child rapists not allowed to be within a thousand feet of a school or a school event or is having kids sit on his lap telling them, tell me about your booty. Now, why hasn't he been arrested? We're going to tell you all about him and play some shocking clips here. But the good news is parents are protesting this everywhere. And now that they know how to get the person's real name and run their plates, because notice the public schools are doing it, the libraries are doing it, the community centers are doing it, and normally, somebody that's going to be around kids has to do a background check. Oh, they're a school principal or a coach or a teacher or a librarian, but not these people because they're protected. They're the vanguard of what's happening. So here's the Daily Mail. Library let convicted sex offender read to kids as young as two in drag. Now, when KHOU was forced to first report on this last Thursday... They said, oh, he was arrested for something with children. No, he was convicted and given 10 years. He served five. He's not allowed to be around children ever. He's on probation. Why hasn't he been arrested? We actually got his record. Nobody else has this. We have his record. We'll give it to you in a moment. And under law, his record should be public, but they're trying to cover it up. Houston highlights library debuts drag queen story time. And they've got names like Muffy Fish Bucket Pants. So really gross terms towards women. And imagine big, giant, fat men in really scary outfits with the kids looking scared. Their parents are telling them, it's okay. The kids are leaning back into their parents, grabbing their parents and teachers' legs and arms. The children are recoiling at huge, big, fat men. But their weird leftist mothers are like pushing them towards them with a big fat man shaking their butt in their face. Think about that. And then Howard Stern has guest on making fun of me saying this is wrong. I don't think Howard Stern's into this. I'm sure he's going to do the right thing and come out and say something. So now we have Alberto, Albert Alfonso Garcia, 32. And we have him leading the operation in Houston, a convicted rapist of an eight-year-old boy. And we have the media not telling you what's in his record. He's convicted of aggravated sexual assault, rape of an eight-year-old boy. He's listed as a moderate risk to reoffend. Well, I think that moderate's up to high risk. He's targeting kids. Has to register as a sex offender for life. Last checked in with Houston PD in February 2019. Sentenced to prison for 10 years. Got out. And then has five years community supervision. Oh, the community's supervising him. He's with your children right now. So let's go to local news. This is original local news, KHLU, same one covering up for him, saying library debuts drag queen story time. Here he is with others telling your two-year-olds to shake their ass. Here it is. The Heights Public Library today debuting a new children's story hour called Drag Queen Storytime. Stephanie Whitfield sat in on the program designed to promote acceptance. 
Good morning, everybody. The Heights Library had a special guest for story time. Oh, my goodness. Hi. Everyone is dressed so nice. I wish I would have wore a nice costume for y'all. A visitor who usually down. performs for an older audience. All right. My name is Blackberry. I'm a bearded dragon. Hold on, pause right there. That means I'm a lady. We're going to come back and play all this. No, you're not a lady. You're a big, giant, fat black man with a huge beard who anyone would be scared of anywhere, whether you're white or black. You look like a convicted felon. You look like a crazy person. You look like a maniac. If you talk to anybody at a park, they'd run from you and call the police. Just like your buddy, who's the convicted child rapist, who we're about to show. They're there freaking your kids out in a big, giant, sick exercise, rubbing your noses into it. And by the way, whether it's New York or Houston or anywhere, they're, they're having one next Friday in, in, in New Braunfels, Texas, with your children. Doesn't matter. It's all choreographed. It's all unified. And you've got, in Houston, the leader of it uh, is a convicted child sex rapist uh and this is going on at schools libraries i've got articles all over the country where parents aren't told in rhode island in colorado in california that your elementary students show up and there's a bunch of these people there and your kids sit on their laps i mean imagine if you've had known a neighbor for 10 years they're nice and you've got a five-year-old daughter you invite them over for barbecue and you, you know you've known bob for for five years whatever he's a nice guy He's a plant manager. And all of a sudden, your five-year-old daughter is sitting on Bob's lap, and Bob is dressed nice and everything, but Bob starts talking to your daughter about sex. You'd probably karate chop Bob in the neck if he was lucky. But if it's a big old giant fat black dude or fat Mexican or fat white guy you know, with, that looks like a total demon out of some nightmare PCP hallucination, shaking that big old booty in their face with big old giant choppers, with a bunch of whacked out leftist women, then it's cute and it's fun. And these kids don't know what's hit them. And again, we keep showing this scary guy, what about the dude that was the leader of it, the convicted child rapist? We'll get to him in the video in a minute. So I'm gonna explain this again. Your children, without you asking in many cases, are served up like an all you can abuse buffet all over the country with the same talk, the same execution, the same weird dude of the most creepy guys you've ever seen in your life. That if they did this in a park, they'd be arrested. But now they're gods put on pedestals by the Associated Press and by Reuters and by CNN and by Good Morning America. What does that tell you? It's Hollywood, folks. This is their venom injected right into your children. These poor little children. So I'm going to stop interrupting. Here's KHOU that tried to cover all this up when this came out. Going, oh, well, he did something with a kid but wasn't convicted. No, he was convicted. They said, oh, it was a 14-year-old. It was an 8-year-old. And again, we haven't gotten this dude yet. Albert Alfonso Garcia, 32. So let's go ahead now and go to the shocking KHOU piece you're a radio listener, you're lucky, because you're not having to see an incredibly scary man with a beard in a dress who weighs at least 400 pounds scaring the hell out of children. Here it is. The Heights Public Library today debuting a new children's story hour called Drag Queen Storytime. Stephanie Whitfield sat in on the program designed to promote acceptance. Good Let's hit pause. Morning, Back it up to the beginning. Hell, let's take them to the state mental hospital and let them be with serial killers to have acceptance. Here, let's just take the most insane, crazy people. By the way, we went and found these folks' YouTube channels. We can't play this on air. All they talk about is robbing and stuff and other things. You know what? We will play some clips coming up where they talk about... Well, actually, we have... Oh, I'm sorry. One of the guys is a convicted murderer who cut his boyfriend up with a saw. Uh-huh. 
and he's on TV with small children talking about how they drug children. So, so we'll play all that. This may take a few more segments, sorry. Because the horror is so incredible. We've just turned our children over. Oh, you rape children. Oh, you kill people with saws. Where are your parents? I don't know. You've just been handed by the school a 10-year-old boy who's on YouTube with you looking drugged out of his damn mind. But it's okay because it's liberal. Here, let's let's go to KHOU, good old Texas, you know, standing up. And notice he goes, things usually reserved for adults. It's all like, ha, 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 we got your children. Here it is. The Heights Public Library today debuting a new children's story hour called we? Drag Queen Storytime. Stephanie Whitfield sat in on the program designed to promote acceptance. Good morning, everybody. The Heights Library had a special guest for story time. Oh, my oh. goodness. Everyone is dressed so nice. I wish I would have wore a nice costume for y'all. A visitor who usually performs for an older audience. All right. My name is Blackberry. I am a bearded drag queen. That means I'm a lady with lots of facial hair. Do you want to touch my hair? No. This program is geared towards Good kids. Licking his lip, you want to touch me? To the, you ask your kid. You know, don't worry, they sit on his lap coming up, and he's not the convicted child rapist or the guy that chopped up his boyfriend. We're going to get to them. Oh, don't worry. Continue. Then younger. I just want to expose them to things they don't get to see every day and want it to become the more normal and more accepted. Yeah, they sure. Well, hey, hey, you know what? Course, so. Hit pause. Back it up. Take them down to people with Black Plague coming in TB. Hell, give them TB. That's what the illegal aliens bring in anyways. Exactly. You want to let them experience your children. It was coming up, meeting with a convicted child rapist. New experiences you don't get every day, huh? L l let's continue. Expose them to things they don't get to see every day and want it to become the more normal and more accepted. Oh. They've never seen a drag queen before, so they thought it was a good chance to see one. But let's turn around. And shake your butt. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. It was a first for this branch of the public library, too. It is amazingly unique, and that is pause again. something. It's amazingly unique. No, it's happening everywhere. And normally, you got to be in a, you know, high-security prison to be able to have a 400-pound black dude, you know, say, I'm going to shake my ass in your face. But don't worry. You can now go have your children do it, or Joe Biden will do it for them as well. Let's continue strive for for sure um we definitely at this particular branch but also at houston public library always want to promote diversity uh understanding inclusion and fun let me hear my cats of course a love of books too blackberry says reading is a way to break the stigma of drag in queer culture that's the whole goal is to uh make kids that aren't used to seeing something like me uh, more comfortable to seeing it. So once they go into school later on in life and they see something that's totally different from them, instead of bullying, they're more accepting. One, two, three. Stinky cheese. Stinky cheese. Now, there were definitely some kids who had to warm up to Blackberry, but that's the whole reason some parents went, to expose their children to something that they've never seen before. And most people seem to walk away having a good time. Yeah, start them young, right? Mm -hmm. Saw a lot of smiles there. Yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. That's like satire from a science fiction movie where, like, pedophile aliens take over. Start them young. Yeah. The first, the kids are all scared. And after about an hour, like, they're being normalized. And that's how pedophiles do it is they test you. They, they get you used to it. And we come back. We're going to play who was running the operation, the convicted child rapist, and then the convicted uh, person that cut his boyfriend up with a saw with little kids is all part of this. And this is all just women bringing their kids. It's beautiful. But hey, don't worry. I'll show you the news articles and I've got the video where they don't ask you now. They're coming to your public school and your daughter and son is gonna sit on that convicted rapist lap. He, he attends shows in Austin, you name it, with small children sexualizing them. He's a convicted child rapist. And the corporate media is pushing the pedophile takeover in the name of obese men mainly, dressed up as women, as their camouflage, as they attempt to sexualize children. Now, the first clip I want to play before I get to Albert Alfonso Garza is from a Millie Weaver report up on Infowars.com. But their whole house of cards is coming down because it's still illegal to have sex with children, and many of these monsters have. This is a report dealing with 
Desmond is amazing, the main drag kid they promote everywhere, whose parents rent him out to gay bars to dance for men. Since he was six or seven years old, he's been a drag queen. Uh, it turns out child drag queen appeared on Notorious Killer's YouTube show repeatedly. Michael Alig, who launched the whole club kids movement, which means underage boys in clubs with adults having sex with them and men pretending to be babies so pedophiles can have sex with them. That is their own admission. So here are these gentlemen on their show where they had this young boy talking about bring your children to us. Here it is. And now we've got something to show you, and we have to warn you, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got young or impressionable children in your household, bring them to the screen right now. <laughs> what we're going to show you is going to leave an impression on them, and we hope the impression will be that they grow up, if they're three or four or five years old, to become seven or eight-year-old drag queen performers. <laughs> You have to understand, I have hundreds of clips just as bad. I have them with Desmond is Amazing talking with signs saying we take Rohibinol and then with another drag queen saying I like to snort ketamine, which is a drug you take so you can be gang raped. And you don't feel any pain while it's happening. So we've already played this before. This is incredible. I've been criticized by mainstream media for saying this is wrong, including Howard Stern. And I don't think Howard Stern is aware of all this, certainly, or he wouldn't be doing this. Here is a top drag queen that performs at adult clubs saying he admits to grooming children at story hour events. And, and the full video is like an hour long. He says at city council in Louisiana, you will not stop me. Your children are mine. I will groom them, which is the pedophile term. See, the, 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 these people, whether this guy's a victim himself or not, because he sounds like he doesn't know what he's saying, they believe in it. They can't stop. They can't quit. It's their passion. It's who they are. It's their religion. Let's go ahead and roll the video. Here it is. Hi, my name is Dylan Pontiff. I'm actually going to be one of the drag queens reading for Drag Queen Story Time. So apparently to a lot of people in this room, I'm the big boogeyman. I am just as talented as a singer or a dancer or anyone that has a special talent. It just mine is dressing up as a woman, entertaining a crowd. The eyes that people give you whenever they think that you are the one that's in support of this event is truly disgusting. But I'm here to let you know that this event is something that's gonna be very beautiful. And for the children and the people that support it are gonna realize that this is gonna be the grooming of the next generation. We are trying to groom the next generation to not see the way that they just did. And just because I said that, you heard the little plur of people behind me. It's this guy. They're going to groom the kids to not run at the playground, to not run from the white van. You're going to groom them, which is what they do. That's what, I'm not saying this guy's a pedophile. Oh, surely not. He goes in and talks about, oh, I perform at gay clubs and I dance naked, but I can control that with your children. Give me access, you will. You cannot make it up. But America's asleep with the switch, does whatever the left says, so that no one will dare even resist it. Should we play Desmond and the convicted um, murderer? You know, just, oh, here's our child. We don't have jobs. Our child dances at your bars. Here's the person that launched this whole movement who's a convicted murderer talking about you know how great everything is. And here he is on another show talking about ketamine. No, we're not going to play those clips. We've already played those before. But that's what people are doing because we've advocated our responsibility. We've turned totally loose to the decadent establishment and their religion that is stealing the energy of children. Drag queen story time reader once charged with child sex assault. ABC 13. No, he was convicted and given 10 years. They know that. But every way, they go, oh, it was a 14-year-old. It was an 8-year-old. That's the news working. I mean, you watch that KHOU report where they're like, it's fun. Get them all they're young. Great. Well, the kids didn't like it, but this will teach them to like it. It's like a joke. The kids didn't like a bunch of big, fat men rubbing their asses on them. <laughs> well, they'll certainly learn to like it later. Get them all they're young. ha, 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 ha. No, you're not on five hits of acid, folks. This is happening. And that's why they want us off the air. Oh, here it is. Drag Queen story time. Document cam shot. Plays for TV viewers. Saturday, September 30th. It's just last year. 1 to 1.45 p.m. Break out the dress-up chest. Let your imagination run wild. Featuring Blackberry and Tantia 
Molly and Nina, which means bad girl. And boy, bad girl's a bad girl. Bad girl raped an eight-year-old boy until he bled everywhere and has been in the pen. But now your children are sitting on their lap and running their fingers through that hair. You mean to play the clip? They're like, run your fingers through my hair. You mean to play it for you again? You can't make it up. Your acquiescence has allowed this. Hundreds of truck attacks, thousands of stabbings, hundreds of shootings, hundreds of thousands of dead Christians, 1,300 churches blown up from Europe to the Middle East to Asia by Muslims. No coverage. One mosque gets shot up into the world. Every Christian's to blame. Trump's to blame. Total coverage everywhere. Dr. McCam shot. Oh, look, there's Blackberry. And then there's the convicted child rapist. Ah. Here, let's play some of the video off the YouTube channel of this person where he's putting on makeup with his friend and they're talking about scams and other weird stuff, putting on their disguises before they go out. Hey, kids are scared of men, big fat men, they should be. Let's dress up like demon clown women and let's go. Here they are, let's play some audio. Here they are putting the disguises on. And she, you know, that's how she got her fan base on Queens of the Week and why they wanted her to um, stay. Keep going, yeah. Keep going. So that's why, you know, I wanted her a part of it. Abune, um, she just, she's not doing drag right now, so, and she mm -hmm. misses it, so the only drag she was doing is when she did videos. Mm -hmm. So she loves it. Yeah, she's very talented. And then, um, this crime scene was, like, uber excited about it. She wanted to, us to have merchandise and thinking towards the future. I was like, yes, ma'am. See, that's what I thought. I was thinking way out of the future from our channel, too, but we could never get a cast of girls that was serious. There you go. And it's hard. It's, it's, well, it don't is hard worry. to understand. Uh, you got a captive audience of two- and three-year-olds that'll sit on your lap, and it doesn't matter if the person in the blue wife beater is uh, raped an eight-year-old boy. It was love, according to Nambla. We're going to go to break and come back with the other big news that I haven't hit yet. And uh, Beto O'Rourke and his pathetic flopping around like a fish out of water. It's back in the news. I didn't cover this. It's, uh, oh boy, Barack Obama's brother asked if Michelle is Michael Obama. We're going to, they say I'm the person that said that. No, it was Joan Rivers right before she was murdered or died. Uh, that's all coming up. And then we've also got this big report I didn't get to. I'll make it to it tomorrow. A lot of work went into this, but uh, the, the militarization, the radicalization of young people. Please don't there. I want to finish up what I was talking about earlier. When we were playing these local newscasts going, oh, the children are experiencing something that normally only adults would see. They're experiencing things that you know are out of the ordinary. Big fat men that are convicted rapists of children shaking their butts in your children's face and having them sit in your lap like this individual. If you're a TV viewer, you can see him. Tatina Malia Nina, that's the fake name, the bad girl. How about an ISIS beheading? How about something you don't, kids don't normally see when they're four years old? Let's take them and watch somebody die of cancer in a, in, a, in a hospital bed. It's so sick how they've used our openness in this culture for this type of abuse, and it's, it's, it's just out of control. I'm a, but they've got a bunch of followers in this country and a bunch of jellyfish, and they tell them do it, so they do it. But here's the deal. The public, ourselves, we're going to go run your plates legally and lawfully, and we're going to do a little bit more than that. And uh, then the police don't arrest you when you're supposed to stay away from kids. We're going to make it public. And that'll just make them come after us even more. Exactly. Whatever makes the system come after me, I cover that. And the pedophilia is what they protect. So remember that about mainstream media. Remember that about Hollywood. They just rehired the Guardians of the Galaxy guy that says he loves pedophilia, loves having sex with kids, loves all these pedophile directors. And they're just like, you know what? You keep doing that. We love you. It's who they are. It's a cult. And the sooner we wake up to it, the better. I'm going to stop right there. Pete O'Rourke is a total fake. He says he's against rich people. His wife's worth a billion dollars. He comes from a rich family. His father-in-law is worth $27 billion and a big globalist. 
he poses in all these photos like he's pulling his pants up and he's out in Big Bend and he's like this messiah from the desert. And I said that when I first saw the cover. Then you open it up and he says, I was born to run. I am your leader. He does this fake talk like this, like Bernie Sanders and Obama. I'll tell you, health care will be free. School will be free. Everything will be free. He's like cross between Barack Obama and Bernie Sanders. Nothing against folks that aren't from Texas, but my God, this boy's got a New Haven, Connecticut accent. And that's where he's from. But he'll come down here, that lovely little carpetbagger, and he'll teach us dumbass Texans how to operate. But his real danger is he did get a bunch of Democrats elected and almost turned the state blue, getting a bunch of moron young people behind him. So all you Texans sitting on your laurels thinking, Texas is red to the end of the world. You're an idiot. And you're wrong. So wake up. Because Beto is cancer. They're running the caravans. They're running the crime. They're not getting busted. Like AOC, where they're illegal campaign money, millions of it stolen. The Justice Department loves that. They love scum like this. But he said something human, a compliment. He said... My wife raised our three children almost without me. She's amazing. They go, a woman with children? Like, a children are important? They're good for body parts or for big fat men to have sex with. Uh, but they're toilet paper. And he, I apologize. It's not good to take care of kids. You're right. And I have white privilege. He's the Messiah. Couldn't even get reelected as a state rep and... Well, he's a good guy you can trust out there, boy. He puts his hands on his booty. He pulls up his pants like Ronald Reagan, so you know Beto, that blue shirt. Why, he's a regular guy you can trust and bet your last dollar on, my friend. How long's it been since you got a big old steaming bowl of Pito O'Rourke? Yes. Well, that's too long there. You need a little bit more of that, don't you? But he wants to champion John F. Kennedy's spirit. Oh, how beautiful. Now, let's shift gears to the next subject. And yes, this is red meat, but I'm not the one that ever said it. Michelle Obama is built like an NFL linebacker. And then you read in Obama's own memoir that he didn't have one but two transsexual, that's the new proper term, he said tranny, nannies when he was a kid. And I don't hate anybody as long as they're adult what they want, but... You know, she comes out of different videos looking like she's got a roll of quarters in her pants or half dollars. And she's got shoulders, you know, wider than mine. And I got wide shoulders, folks. And it was Joan Rivers, right before, a month before she died, the private club, they said fire shot out of her throat. They, like, dumped gas down her throat, reportedly. Just, I mean, she's just a fire shot out like Puff the Magic Dragon. She's from private clinic getting some stuff done, like fire shooting out. She's dead. She says, no, we already have a tranny uh, first lady. She's a tranny. And then when I reported that, they didn't talk about Joan Rivers. They said, I said it. Here's the article out of the AmericanMirror.com. Oh, boy. Barack Obama's brother asked if Michelle is Michael. Barack Obama's half-brother, Malik, took on to Twitter Thursday to ask if Michelle is actually Michael. Is Michael Michelle really Michael? Obama asked, referring to the conspiracy theory that the former first lady is actually a man. Hey, I forgot to tell you guys to get this, see if you can find it. Obama refers to Michelle as Michael. Not once, not twice, not three times. There are five videos where he goes, my wife, Michael. What the hell? So... They go on to say the independent reported that Alex Jones first reported it in 2017 in a 12-minute video of the InfoWars host analysis footage and photos, which he believes proves Michelle Obama has a tallywhacker. No, I was covering what 
Joan Rivers said. Let's play what Joan Rivers had to say right before her death. Here it is. Miss Rivers, how are you? You made you made a ton of news right. officiating the wedding in New York yesterday. Is this like a is this like a new uh, cottage uh, career move I for you? I'm so excited. Okay. And I should do very well because I don't charge. And do you think that the country will see the first the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman well, we president? We have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle uh, is a trans. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. Oh God. It's okay. She does the... Okay, so she died after that. But then they never... They never say that I was reporting on her. The headline is, Joan Rivers says Michelle Obama is a tranny. And then there's videos of her where she's not adjusting clothing. I mean, either she's put a cucumber in her pants that she's adjusting, like Spinal Tap, or she's packing heavy artillery. But the reason I get into this is the globalists are obsessed with this. They're obsessed with turning men into women, women into men. It's their religion. So then you realize why this whole thing's being pushed, why this whole thing's being done. Michelle Obama looks like a man, and Obama's brother is saying he thinks she's a man. And all I'm saying is, when I say tr that the birth certificate's fake, it, they put it out in six layers. doesn't mean he wasn't born in Kenya. We know he was born in Hawaii. We even know who his real dad was. The point is they put out fake stuff on purpose, and then they flaunt Michelle Obama, who's got wider shoulders than Obama. Put that back up for TV viewers. I mean, it's insane. She's built like a brick you-know-what house. She's ready for the NFL. I mean, look at... She, there she is with three other women. Is that a woman? No. Hell, I expect to see her at drag time, story time with the kids. It's just incredible when you realize these people are obsessed with what sex they are and sex. It's total mental illness.